नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू संसद टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो इन फोकस वेयर वी टेक अ डिटेल लुक एट नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यूज टूडे वी गुड टॉक अबाउट स्पेस इकोनॉमी नाउ ऑन इंडिया जी ट्वेंटी प्रेजिडेंसी इसरो इज ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द प्रीकस इवेंट फॉर फोर्थ स्पेस इकोनॉमी लीडर्स मीटिंग विद द थीम टूवर्ड्स अ न्यू स्पेस एरा एंड बाई एरा इट मीन्स इकोनॉमी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी एंड अलायंस नाउ स्पेस इकोनॉमी लीडर्स मीटिंग और एस ई एल एम वॉज फर्स्ट कंडक्टेड ऑन द साइड लाइन्स ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड डिस्कस द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ एनहांसिंग स्पेस इकोनॉमी स्पेस टेक्नोलॉजी बेस्ड इनपुट्स एंड सर्विसेज हैव बिकम एन इंटीग्रल पार्ट ऑफ आर नॉर्मल डे टू डे लाइफ एंड कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ स्पेस इन द ग्रोथ ऑफ ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी is ever increasing now increase in private sector participation has dramatically changed the space domain as well space sector reforms in india has opened up the sector for private entrepreneurship with an intention to make india a global manufacturing hub for space products and to build a strong space ecosystem in the country so today we'll take a closer look at the concept of space economy uh, the coming together of all uh, uh, brilliant minds at the G20 platform uh, in in the form of SELM meeting as well what are the key agenda items there how how can this uh, you know forum help taking forward uh, the concept of space economy and what more is required to be done in addition to the involvement of a private sector for which uh, rules and norms uh, are already being put in place and for more on this we joined by distinguished panel of experts let me first uh, introduce them to you beginning with mr ratan srivastava is joining us here in the studio author and independent consultant on uh, aerospace sector we also have with us uh, retired group captain ajay lele joining us a uh, consultant with mp idsa and uh, dr surendra pal a distinguished uh, scientist and former senior advisor to isro is also joining us welcome to you as well dr pal I'll begin with you, uh, Mr. Shrivastava, and uh, you know, uh, Captain Lele. Let's first start by understanding, you know, the concept of space economy. What does it constitute? What do we mean by actually space economy? Because as of now, uh, perhaps the common layman only thinks about space in terms of uh, uh, the space excursions or missions as well, satellites being put in place. But uh, how does that uh, form an integral part of the economic uh, structure we're talking about? So, to make it very simple and easy for the layman to understand. any economic activity which impacts the economy of a country and the humans as such is space economy so a space economy could be probably divided into three segments the one is the manufacturing aspect of it the other is the satellite aspect of it satellite manufacturing services and related uh, seg- segments and the third is the consumer services such as geolocation google services for example okay. and they are all uh, related to consumer services and within this you will have probably more uh segmentation in terms of primes for example uh an area in space or lockheed martin or isro as of now is a prime but is also an space agency then you have the tier 1 the tier 2 and the tier 3 and so on mm-hmm. just like any business is uh, divided into having said that the space economy as such and its contribution to the, the gdp of the countries that it is operating in in g20 is a relatively new concept it's not something which has been there for ad infinitum because space as such was opened up to the private sector very recently even in the west mm-hmm. so uh, this is a new subject this is a new concept and uh, this has been uh, uh, this has been taken up by g20 as well as other countries which are space faring and that's why it's called the space economy leadership Uh, SELM, Space SELM. Economic uh, Leadership Meeting, as well. We'll we'll come to that aspect also as to why that is important. But uh, uh, Captain Lele, you know, uh, from your views, what are the current trends when we are talking about uh, you know space economy? Uh, all issues which are really important there. You see, as far as space economy is concerned, it's a very large field. Uh, there are various aspects which are associated with it. One is that you provide satellite launching services, like India is doing since the year nineteen ninety nine onwards. then you provide data services that means you can share the data today there is a conflict which is going on in ukraine uh, private players particularly the commercial actors are providing the satellite data to them uh, so the data is another service uh, the third service is satellite manufacturing service mm-hmm. uh, satellite manufacturing service is also there for quite some time uh, if i am not wrong in the year 2008 and 2010 uh, along with eads uh, astrium europe india has the isro has uh, basically launched two satellites which were made by isro so we are at the business of a space economy for quite some time then if you look the other aspect of a space economy is to provide the services for launching uh, that is one is uh, the launcher services and other is a ground infrastructure which is required for it 
you require radar systems, you require various associated communication equipments where you can interact with the satellite, get the data downloaded, so on and so forth. So there are four to five aspects of a space economy in a larger sense. Okay. But now if you go to the specifics, there are various new aspects of space uh, economics, economics are uh, emerging. Like we have seen space tourism becoming a very important area. Then people are now talking of on-orbit servicing of a satellites. So there are various aspects of a space economy which are evolving. People are talking of debris reduction technologies. So these are length and breadth of activities which are happening into the domain of a space. Uh, India as a country had started concentrating on three to four aspects for the last three to four decades. I think in years to come, we will have to concentrate more on emerging aspects too. Okay, okay. We'll talk about those emerging aspects as well. But since you spoke about uh, India there, Captain Lele, I'd like to bring in uh, Dr. Surinder Pal also. Uh, Dr. Pal, in, in your views, uh, you know, uh, how would you describe uh, India's journey as far as space sector is concerned? And specifically when we're talking about space economy, where do we stand? Yeah, I, I think uh, we have done reasonably well in the uh, last, uh, uh, maybe last 50 years. First of all, when we talk about uh, space economy, we must understand that uh, space is no more uh, property or domain of uh, governments, aerospace industries, defense industry, and uh, everybody is going towards the privatization. Whosoever can do it in that sector, uh, whosoever takes the first lead will earn the money. So earning the money, providing the uh, you know uh, job, and also giving a flip to the infrastructure of the country makes it a difference for the space economy. That's the thing. Now, here what happens in the new uh, era, see, space economy generates most value enabling or enhancing activities. You know, that includes the services, applications, etc. on Earth, and significant future values could arise from functions in orbit, which uh, one of the panelists have talked about it, that uh, fueling or mm -hmm. maybe servicing the orbit, that's one thing. There's one more thing is there that uh, with the advent of 3D printing, computer aided designs, new improved uh, min uh, min materials, ma uh, miniaturizations, etc., we can replace the uh, you know many systems in our orbit. And we there's a, when we launched the Chandrayaan one, okay. you know there was a big talk that uh, we have got the helium three isotope and deuterium on orbit in the uh, moon, moon and some. Uh, 100 kg could uh, generate enough power to gigawatts of power. And that was costing at the time 140 million. Now, this is a concept which uh, SpaceX is doing. You take a satellite, a launcher, you put a rocket on that one, take to moon, um, have it generate the fuel there, and bring back that uh, helium-3 isotope and deuterium. That's one concept which uh, may, it may no longer remain a concept. It mm -hmm. may in five years, it may come out. There's another thing is that applications are more now, you know, uh, maybe communication, maybe remote sensing, surveillance, or uh, particularly for India, if you look into it, the space technology has uh, contributed considerably for the small farmers, uh, for, uh, you know, agriculture. Also, it has contributed towards our road aligning, etc., for um, uh, planning our in, uh, in cities. So many things, uh, besides the communication, we have provided the internet uh, to the uh, places where nobody can reach. So, such a thing. So, all these things are part and parcel of space technology. I don't think what we, the, I mean, we could think about all these things 10 years back. You know, 10 years back, it was a concept. Today, it's the reality. And it flips it. India is the sixth uh, administration. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, you know, uh, we will we we are losing your audio there, Dr. Paul. But we'll we'll come back to you. Uh, in terms of you know uh, where Dr. Paul left, I'd like to bring you in, uh, Mr. Shrivastava. That in terms of the reforms which have been brought by India, because all of you were uh, you know referring to this this uh, idea of uh, more involvement of the private sector, entrepreneurship being uh, you know private entrepreneurship being being one of the key uh, pivotal points when we're talking about. Uh, the growth ahead in, in the space economy or the space sector as well. So how would you analyze the reforms which have been brought in, the kind of involvement of the private sector which is there? Is it up to the mark or, you know, are we still uh, uh, in, in that stage where uh, one more push is perhaps required? So thank you, Vishal. That's a very pertinent question in, in, in context of the discussion that we are having right now. Uh, the private sector was uh, just a vendor to the ISRO and this vendor system was incubated by ISRO in the, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the vicinity of where they were doing the 
work related to maybe launch vehicles, for example, development of launch vehicles, first the SLV, PSLV, GSLV and so on. So there was an ecosystem developed in Thiruvanthapuram. Therefore, uh, they were basically looking at the launch systems and launch vehicle components and stuff like that, uh, metallurgy. Then there was a system which was developed, ecosystem which was developed near Bangalore because most of the work related to satellite manufacturing and satellite assembly, satellite development design, research was being done in Bangalore and so on in Hyderabad and uh, PRL developed its own ecosystem. But this was just the beginning of involving the private sector as a vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, they were not doing anything more than that. For example, they were not contributing to research or they were not doing joint development of systems and stuff like that. Okay. So, Gradually, it was, it, was, it was seen that if we have to bring in the benefits of space to the common person in India, to the common man in India, we need to bring in private players as well. Because everybody has a role to play. ISRO being a space agency has a role to play. The role of private sector as an enabler, bringing in of capital, resources, technology, co-development has a role to play. At the end of the day, academia has a role to play as well. You know, for uh, for let's say sponsored research okay. in, into new areas. So when this was this when this reality became apparent, then the government decided to open the space sector to everybody, not only to the ISRO. And ISRO welcomed that because it helped them go faster into the aims and objectives that they wanted to achieve. So today we have a space policy which is right up being approved, as you know, probably it will take some time to be notified, wherein we have been delineated the role of ISRO, the role of NSIL as a commercial arm of the ISRO, the role of academia, the role of private sector, as well as the role of startups, which is extremely important in, in the context that we are talking about today. Mm -hmm. uh, so private public participation is the way forward if we need to bring the benefits of the space, uh, uh, space technology to the common man. As, as Dr. Swayanpal said, internet is one of them. Direct to home television is another one of them. The role of MET in prediction of monsoons and the role of uh, observation satellites in coastal uh, you know, oceanography, the role of uh, uh, the role of surveillance satellites. And, 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 and all these all these have a very profound impact profound on our Profound impact on, on, on the on the daily lives of common people. Mm -hmm. and navigation, I mean how, where will we be without you know having a navigation satellite? Mm -hmm. So this is all possible primarily because the sector has been opened not only in India but also globally. Okay, okay, uh, Captain Lele, you know uh, when we are talking about India's space policy and an integration of all these elements, all these stakeholders, the private sector, the, the public sector establishments, the academia as well, because research and development is also a very key and important part. And there are uh, you know institutions which have done uh, uh, very important and very credible work in this area, but funds are required and then comes in the private sector. So how would you assess the policy and the role to be played by these uh, components or these stakeholders and their integrated approach? I think uh, we are at a right time in history right now to make investments into the domain of a space. Because if you see globally, uh, this is the time when people have started privatizing space more and more. Because uh, for many years, we only knew that NASA is doing something. But a couple of years back, spaces came on the horizon. Now you've got private players, uh, they are basically in transportation or a tourism business, but Elon Musk is there, then you've got uh, players like uh, Blue Origin is there, then Virgin is there. So right now we are in the correct time in space, uh, in history, where privatization is being pushed all over the world. Why this is getting pushed? For two to three reasons. One is that there are a tremendous amount of uh, technological benefits which are emerging. Gone are the days where we were talking that internet will be only through the sea-based cables. Now you got uh, SpaceX, uh, which, uh, which is doing uh, their own experimentation. Uh, then we got one web where India has launched 72 satellites. So now internet is becoming a more attractive thing through the space. Uh, so if you see the technology wise also, we are in a correct time. And I think that's where India is now trying to encash it. Okay. Because technically speaking, if you see India only controls 2% of the global space industry market. So we have to do much, much more. The target so is to reach around exactly, 9% by 2030. 8 to 9%, that's what Chairman Israel said. And I think that is possible the way the boost is happening. Uh, for all these years, if you see the success of a SpaceX, is being talked only as a success of a SpaceX. But you must understand that there was tremendous amount of hand-holding done by NASA. So today, ISRO is playing that role. Okay. Now, ISRO is doing a tremendous amount of hand-holding for India's private industry. Because what happens is that as a startup, you can develop a technology. But testing facilities and all that 
take, take tremendous amount of a time to get developed, number one, and they're too costly to get developed. Okay. So you require a certain amount of a handholding by the main player. So now today, India's space is ISRO plus private industry. Okay, okay. Let me bring in Dr. Paul on that. Dr. Paul, uh, you know, uh, how is this uh, collaborative approach between the private and the public sector in uh, the space domain in India coming about? As in uh, the challenges, of course, we would like to understand, but the opportunities also and the kind of work which has been done so far. Yeah, I think uh, we have, I mean, as one of the panelists told in the past, we have done it with the private players. I mean, they were uh, some sort of vendors, but now they can be partners with us. So definitely I see a bright future. And you know, one thing in the future is one earth, one space and one future. That's for everybody. So we are following those, uh, that idea. And also we are following what is the UN has told for 2030. That space should be for everybody. So that's what is being done. And I know many startups are doing it for the application. I always maintain that application is the thing where a lot of economical uh, flip can be there. So many persons are coming up with applications. We have got infrastructure, communication, remote sensing, navigation, so and surveillance, info defense also. So it's the applications which can give a big flip. The last thing which I want to add here in a one sentence is that uh, Ukraine war has shown that we, what space technology which we used to think some four, four years or five years back is no longer valid. The total paradigm is getting changed. The small satellites are bigger gains. The SpaceX has shown, mm -hmm. uh, uh, OnePlus has shown it when we launched the satellites. And reusable launchers, reusable, reserviceable re things on the satellite, okay. those things are making a difference. And that will make a major impact, not only communication, it will make a major impact in material science, pharmaceutical things. It will make a major impact on uh, many of the, our industries, including the semiconductor industries, where we need a clean environment and uh, almost uh, zero gravity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll come to those uh, emerging uh, uh, you know, technologies as well as... Uh, uh, Mr. Lele was also uh, referring to, but uh, uh, Mr. Srivastava, you know, uh, since we're talking about the, the collaborative approach or uh, the way uh, all stakeholders need to move ahead, uh, this was about India's space sector or a country-specific one as well. Let's, let's, you know, shift focus towards the global stage. And since uh, the references to G20 uh, under India's presidency, the SELM, which is going to happen, this was a precursor meeting uh, uh, which is taking place in, in Shillong, but uh, the Space Economy Leaders Meeting, which uh, is the four, going to be the fourth edition. Two things which we would like to understand. One, uh, how significant are, are these, uh, you know, deliberations or these discussions? Uh, because there will be several uh, countries will be present uh, who are prominent, uh, you know, spacefaring countries as well. They have uh, advanced approach as well. They have been in the field for quite some time. And also, what's there uh, to look out for or watch out for in, in the near future? Uh, so, uh, Vishal, I would uh, begin by saying that uh, space economy, as uh, Dr. Lille said, as well as Dr. Paul said, is, uh, is something which is opening up in the last maybe a decade or so. It's not something that was happening earlier. Uh, having said that, the countries which are a part of G20, they found that they have to work together and all the spacefaring nations uh, probably are a part of G20. We have the European Union, which has uh, most of the uh, work being done in Germany and France, which is participating in it. We have US, we have India, we have Japan. So we have more, most of the spacefaring nations as a part of the uh, G20. And therefore, it is imperative that we put our heads together and see how we can bring the synergies that we have in our respective countries on space technology, on space commercialization, on space activities, to ensure that the benefits are not only uh, shared between a couple of countries, maybe spacefaring countries, but to the larger good of the G20 and therefore the space economy should be able to help the G20 nations, which includes the global south, mm -hmm. because they do not have the resources, they have not had the uh, good fortune of having fantastic organizations like ISRO who have incubated technologies on their own through very difficult times. So uh, this, is, this is again a, in, in a series of the meetings that we've been having earlier. We've had uh, see, uh, the meeting which was done of ACLM by uh, in Saudi Arabia, we've had another meeting done last uh, by Indonesia on ACLM. So space economy leaders meeting is a series of meetings and I'm sure it will follow after India's presidency as well. But I think the moot idea here is this to bring the benefits of space 
to everybody who is a part of the G20, which, which means to say that we have to include the benefits which we have enjoyed with others who have not been so fortunate with, but also to advance this. To advance this, we have to put the resources together, and resources together is the only way forward because space has no frontiers. Okay. Okay, so, so you, what you're saying is that the collaborative approach is not only in terms of uh, sharing information, sharing technology, but also, you know, sharing resources. Uh, economic, and, uh, e economic, economic benefits and the commercial benefits. Commercial out of benefits it. as well. That's why, you know, the focus on uh, the economic part of economic. Uh, the space sector, space economy. And that is the reason the Minister of State for Finance mm -hmm. was invited to the SELM. Okay. You, you may have observed that. Yes, yes. Right? So that's, that's a very big indicator where we are going towards, the use, towards using the benefits of space economy towards the GDP of the countries which are participating. In G20. Okay, and in fact, as you rightly said earlier, you know this 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 sector is contributing a lot to the economic growth. Uh, Captain Lele was also referring to that. But Captain Lele, you know, uh, finally, when we look at uh, this this collaborative approach, uh, and you were earlier mentioning that the focus will have to be on on emerging areas. Uh, so, what are those key focus areas for this international collaboration and nationally also when we look within uh, from Indian perspective in terms of. Uh, the key uh, focus areas or the key emerging uh, areas or emerging technologies when we're talking about space sector from an economic point of view as well. Uh, I think if you really look at the composition of G20, like it was uh, already pointed out, that we got seven countries who are space-firing nations into it. So it's a tremendous amount of a gene pool uh, of the people who are working in the domain of a space for a couple of years. Uh, if you see the bilateral collaborations, multilateral collaborations amongst G20, you got all BRICS countries present over there. You got many members of Shanghai Corporation also part of it. So all these people, as a BRICS also, we are doing something in space. As a CEO also, there is something at stake in space. So all these people understand that space is an emerging business for the future. Now, if it is an emerging business for the future, what is different than what was there in the past? So the technologies are different. Today, people are talking of 3D printing technologies. People are talking of new battery technologies. These are the powerful batteries which have come up. Your solar panels, uh, you got foldable solar panels which are there. All those things are important because the cost of carrying one kg weight into the do into space is exorbitantly high for many years. Mm -hmm. Right now, that cost is significantly getting reduced. Number one, because of more number of players are there, so there is an increasing market. And number two is that there are new technologies like uh, high-end sensors are there. So the type of uh, imagery which I was able to download, taking a certain amount of a time, it is said that during last 10 years, the type of uh, imagery which we have got was not there for almost last 50 to 20, uh, 50 to 60 years. Mm -hmm. So because of these modern technologies, modern communication technologies, you are even uh, if you see satellite-based internet at one end, and satellite-based navigation at other end. Okay. So every sector, there are new technologies which are emerging. And 3D printing particularly is expected to be a major game changer. Already people have started developing rockets based on 3D printers also. Okay. Because it reduces the cost significantly of the launch. That is going to be the key player in the future. Okay, since, since you mentioned about you know emerging technology and all that, one quick last question, we're running short of time, but uh, Mr. Shivaswa, the, the developments which are happening in the AI sector, what kind of new dimension, you know, uh, it, it adds to the space uh, sector or space economy as well? I'm sure it'll be, it'll be very interesting to watch. Definitely, AI can be a very powerful tool as far as uh, uh, the consumer services are concerned, which is to say, in the imagery, like Dr. Lele talked about, the imagery, the sharp imagery that we're getting because of new sensors. Now, those imageries, how we analyze that imagery in terms of the commercial exploitation, I mean, the same imagery can be seen in terms of what's happening in oceanography or, it, or the coastal vegetation, mm -hmm. or, it can be, or it can be utilized to see where the flow of the rivers is going. So, or, or, or perhaps how we carry space excursions as well. Ex space that, that, excursions, that <laughs> probably, yes, okay. in, the time to, in the times to come. Okay, okay, very interesting. You know, we'll have to keep a close watch. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Ratan Srivastava, Captain Ajay Lele and Dr. Suvind Pal as well uh, for uh, sharing your inputs uh, with us and our viewers as our experts were pointing out. Of course, uh, a lot more to watch out for when we are looking at space sector. A uh, lot of interesting developments happening, but key focus on the economic aspect of it. Uh, from the space sector, space economy as we call it, uh, uh, various elements, uh, all stakeholders, be it the public sector or the private sector coming together in addition to focus on research and development and a global collaborative approach as well, specifically when you're talking about the G20 platform. We'll keep a close watch uh, on all the developments, keep on bringing you the details and come back again tomorrow with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.